When it comes to playing at their own pace and never in a rush, Shea Gilgis Alexander has mastered it. And somehow he always seems to get to his spots whenever he wants to. And no matter who's guarding him, he's always had that smooth and composed trait to his game. But the recognition wasn't always like this. In fact, he was overlooked and under the radar since a kid but just never have let it define him as a player. This is the Shea Gilgis Alexander story. Shea Gilgis Alexander was born on July 12, 1998 in Toronto, Canada. Now his mother, Charmaine, was a track star who even competed in the 1992 Olympics. But coming up, since Shea didn't have that natural speed and agility like his mother, he really had to develop different moves and ways to get past his defenders. He really developed a knack on knowing how to maneuver through traffic. A big part in Shea's growth was his cousin, Nikhil, as they pushed each other, along with Shea's dad, who was his coach and trainer. So as a freshman while attending St. Thomas More, he was cut from the junior team and he was forced to play on the midget team where he would win team MVP and win the city championship. But even with him starting to come around as a player and the success starting to grow over the next couple of years, he would transfer schools to really try to find his true fit. He winded up attending Hamilton Heights Christian School in Tennessee and by his senior season, he was able to put up averages of 18 points four rebounds and four assists per contest, earning himself to be a four-star recruit and the 35th best prospect in the class of 2017. Now, Shea originally committed to the University of Florida, but chose to opt out and attend his dream school, which was the University of Kentucky. It just made little to any sense at first because he was the lowest ranked recruit of the 2017 class entering their freshman season at Kentucky. Now in his freshman season, he came off the bench in 13 of his first 15 games, while nowhere near looking like a lottery pick. But after realizing that, in order for him to be great and really take that next level, then he was going to have to really push himself from the weight room to the early morning workouts and even film sessions. So after he really took initiative to really enhance his work ethic and attitude, he winded up taking the starting position and finished his freshman stint, averaging 14 points four rebounds and five assists to go along with two steals per contest. He even helped lead his team as far as the Sweet 16. And throughout the course of the games, you just saw that winner's mindset in his playstyle. It just seemed as though that no defender that was guarding him could slow him down. He was able to change speeds and direction with so much ease. He shot 49% from the floor and 40% from the three-point line. So with him having a lot of potential going into the 2018 NBA draft, he also had his share of bust potential due to his lack of strength and overall offensive capabilities. At the draft combine, he measured in with a body fat percentage of just 6%. He also posted a 36 inch vertical to go along with a 6'11 wingspan. And so coming into the draft, he drew comparisons to players like DeJounte Murray and Sean Livingston. He managed to go 11th overall to the Los Angeles Clippers. And for his rookie season, nothing really struck out about him. He averaged 11 points, three assists, and two rebounds, but he caught a lot of people by surprise in the playoffs. As his team took the Warriors to six games, he was able to shoot 50% from behind the three-point line and from being the third to fourth option on most nights to contributing to his team as well as he did in his rookie season was quite astonishing. Now for his second year, he was moved to OKC in part of the Paul George trade, which really did benefit both organizations in a positive way. He really took charge in becoming more of a scorer while being able to up all of his averages as a 19 point per game scorer and the Thunder even made the playoffs. And Shea was a big reason why. I mean, he was arguably their second best player. He was a player who really flourished off the ball and didn't need it in his 
his hands 24-7. Sharing the court with Chris Paul and at times Dennis Schroeder left Shea to play small forward and he really held his own. In the bubble, he tallied on 16 points per game, 40% from the three-point line, and 96% from the free throw line before losing in the first round to the Houston Rockets. But going into his third season, there were still questions going around defenses not really paying attention to Shea because of offensive threats like Chris Paul and Dennis Schroeder. During the next season, it was clear that the Thunder were trying to tank as they traded a lot of their main core. He really solidified himself as a young star. He came into the season with a much improved shot creation ability. He knew that he finally had the keys to the offense. He averaged 24 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds. Now the Thunder did end the season with a record of 22-50, and 50, which was 14th in the Western Conference. So during the offseason, he signed a 5-year max extension worth $179 million. For the 21-22 season, Yogis Alexander led the Thunder with averages of 25 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists per contest. And for the second year in a row, they missed the playoffs with a 24-58 and 58 record. But at times throughout that year, the young new additions really showed glimpses on how great they could possibly be in the future. Shea and the Thunder were expecting to have a great big boost from their first rounder Chet Holmgren in the 2022 NBA Draft, but due to his injury and him missing the whole season, Shea has really took matters in his own hands, looking like a superstar. His development in his mid-range game has really allowed him to be one of the best scorers in the NBA, because with his 6'6 frame along with his 6'11 wingspan, no matter who's in front of him, when he elevates, it just never seems to phase him. He's been immaculate when it comes to catching the defense off balance. And so far, he's been able to average 31 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists. But on November 16th versus the Washington Wizards, not only did he score a career high 42 points, he hit a game winner. The rise of Shea Gilgis Alexander is truly inspiring. He's a player that has never had that crazy athleticism in his game, but at a young age, he really figured out different ways and aspects to affect the game on the offensive end. But from being cut from his JV team in high school, to becoming the ultimate franchise piece of the OKC Thunder goes to show on what type of work ethic he has and how determined he was to be great. People being fans and recognizing my game is cool. Um, it's a pleasure. It's kind of the dream, you know, as a kid. You make it to the NBA and you, you want to be a, a phenomenal player. Um, it's fun. I'm, I'm not going to let it get to my head, though. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Shea Gilgis Alexander story.